Hey everybody, welcome back to Reach and Reverie. Today is a beautiful, perfect spring day and I am enjoying this day by spending as much of it outside in my garden. Let's go into the garden and take a look. I can tell you one thing that excites me already is the fact that we are getting full sun on both of these garden beds. I remember in the dead of winter, I tried sowing seeds in this garden bed. I sowed carrots, radishes, turnips, kohlrabi, and some onion, and I had absolutely no success. I think we got three plants that even germinated, and it was because this was shaded out. But the days are getting longer, and the earth is tilting a little bit, so now that sun is peeking over the pine tree in such a way that we're getting more sun on these garden beds. And as we get closer, a few more weeks now, we're gonna have even more sunlight on this bed. This morning, I spent a good portion of the morning out here working and tending to my garden. And let me tell you, I think that working in the garden is one of the most therapeutic things that you can do. So I started last week with amending my soil, but I got to a good stopping point and this week I went ahead and picked up where I started. So I finished filling up my garden beds. I added more compost and peat moss and amendments to the soil like vermiculite and things like that. And I amended the soil in this bed. I added a border to this garden. So I went into this thinking that I was going to be building beautiful in-ground beds in this location. And the more soil I had to add, because of course, with our horribly um, rock solid clay soil that we have here, I had to add soil. I couldn't just work really with what we have here. So I dug out a lot of the soil that was under here. And as I added my own, it started getting itself raised quite a bit up off the ground to the point where the soil that we're working with is probably five or six inches above ground level. And you know, soil costs quite a bit of money to make and I didn't want to waste it. And so my thought process was once it rains, all of this money, this gold is just going to wash away and erode in the rain. I went to the garden center and I bought some bricks and made an edging to kind of keep this all contained a little bit. So in a way, I now have pseudo raised garden beds next to my raised garden beds when I was trying to do some in-ground garden beds this year. But I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out. I think it's kind of funny to see this bed is completely full all the way up to the top. And this bed that I worked with exactly in the same manner has quite a bit of soil that I could stand to add in this bed. And I just, I wonder why that is. I think this one gets more sunlight, so it got beaten down a li little bit more by the weather last season. But also, this bed had a lot more heavy feeders planted in it last year. So I just think that's interesting how the soil was retained more in this bed than this bed. And it's normal for soil to break down over the seasons. So I just thought that was kind of cool and interesting. I'm probably not gonna add too much more to this one though, just because I'm pretty much at the budget limit that I set for soil this year. And I don't wanna go too much over that because we are still trying to be growing towards self-sufficiency in a sustainable way. And I just, I didn't wanna validate adding more to this bed when I think we can still grow some great stuff here. Back behind the raised garden bed in this corner, I have enclosed this growing space. This is where I grew my cucamelons last year. This year I'm going to grow the Charente melon and I thought it would be perfect back here shaded behind where I'm going to grow my indeterminate tomatoes. That way it can be kind of a, a slightly cooler microclimate for the melon. And our soil back here is also really terrible. So I went ahead and did a similar pseudo raised garden bed in this area 
by amending our my own soil blend and piling it up right here. And again, I used these bricks to retain that soil so it wouldn't wash away. And the last thing that I did this morning was I also built a little retaining wall around this area where I'm gonna be planting flowers to attract pollinators as well as my pole beans that are gonna grow up this cattle panel trellis right here. Show you the poppies. They have just exploded with growth this week, which was really uh, just astounding. I think last week, and you could still see all of the soil in between each one of these plants. And now it's kind of grown up into a big bush of all of these plants. I did also go ahead and take off that upside down tomato cage with the bird netting that was keeping the sparrows from eating my little seedlings because I think that we're at a point now where these guys should be able to survive if sparrows try to nibble on the leaves a little bit. You can see here they have been nibbling on the leaves just a little bit. We got a couple more seedlings in there too starting to germinate. I am so excited about these poppies and I think there's also a couple bachelor buttons in this pot as well. Hey girls! Y'all saw me excited. You think I'm gonna give you my poppies? They see me touching this green. And they say, are you gonna pick some greens for us? Not today, girls. It's starting to look like a great gardening growing space just about now. I am really excited as we get closer. I'm probably about three to four weeks out from putting my started plants into this growing space. We're just a few more weeks out waiting for that last frost date to pass. The fear of frost so that we can get started for the summer garden. I still have a little bit of cleaning up to do, of course. I have all of my little supports and then last season over the winter I was pruning one of my pecan trees and I saved some of the straight stems and I think these will serve a great purpose in the garden helping to support young plants that maybe just need a little bit extra support because we get a lot of heavy winds out here in far western Texas we regularly get like 50, 60 mile an hour winds and that's just a daily occurrence. That's not even something to be super surprised about out here. I'm looking at this big pot right here, which does need to be amended. You can see this soil, pretty compacted, has quite a bit of clay in it. But overall, I think I'm just going to amend it with some compost, give it some um, vermiculite or some perlite to help aerate that soil and we're gonna work with what we have my plan for this spot it is kind of loose like it's I feel like it's clumpy but at the same time it's loose I don't know if that makes sense but I think I'm gonna plant peanuts in this pot this year now this is a 24 inch wide pot and peanuts need an 18 inch diameter growing space to be growing in because peanuts are really neat and that they grow their peanuts underground. It is so strange. So your plant will grow up and the flowers are above ground and whenever it's ready to create peanuts, the plant will actually flop over and the flowers will go into the ground. Underground is where the peanuts are gonna form. So you really wanna give your peanut enough space to grow up and bend back down to the ground those branches. So if you were trying to grow in a smaller pot, then those flowers would actually hang over the edge of the pot and dangle in the air and you wouldn't get any peanuts. Or if you had a bunch of plants next to your peanut, then the other plants would hold that peanut up instead of letting those flowers grow back into the ground and grow peanuts. So if you're looking into growing peanuts or just it interests you. Those are some things to take into consideration. Peanuts, they really like moist soil, humid conditions, which is working against us here because we live in a desert, but I'm going to try them anyway by keeping the soil moist, giving that one peanut a lot of room to grow and stretch his branches and a lot of room to dip back down and reach into the ground. Now, I do feel a little bit guilty here. Whenever I was making my seed order for this season, back in early winter, 
there were a lot of things that were sold out at that time that I was really interested in. Well, as I'm getting wound up and excited and preparing for the spring gardening season, I may have gone back over to Baker Creek's website, rareseeds.com, and a lot of those seeds that I wanted are back in stock. So <laughs> I got a few more seeds. Like I don't have enough already. I know guys, I know. <laughs> I love seeds. <laughs> so let me tell you about some of the seeds that I added. I know it's a little late now. Like I'm already have tomatoes that are grown up, like four weeks old now. I have other plants that I'm already up potting. And here we are with a few more seeds that we need to get started. Well, one of those seeds is a Ecuadorian pinstriped peanut. It has another name it goes by, but it's really hard to pronounce. I'm, I'll try to leave it right here at the bottom of this video. I'm also really excited that I'm going to be growing a red currant spoon tomato. This tomato grows fruits that are about the size of a green pea. It is the smallest tomato variety that I've ever heard of and I think that would just be delightful tossed into a salad. You bite into them and they just pop in your mouth. Just really neat tomato. So I'm going to try that one. I think that because that's such a small variety, I'm hoping that I'm going to go ahead and start it today. And I think it'll be able to catch up to the other tomatoes, maybe mature a little faster because it's not quite as big of a variety as some of the other tomatoes we're growing. I also got an Armenian yard long cucumber, some noodle beans, which are going to be wonderful because they are just beautiful. I've seen them on Roots and Refuge Farms video and I love the way she grows them on an arched cattle panel trellis and they just dangle down beautifully. And they're very heat tolerant, which is an added bonus. Another variety that I discovered because of Roots and Refuge Farms, she actually talked about this one on one of her recent videos where she was talking about all of the tomato varieties that she's growing this year in her garden. And it is a orange peach type of tomato. I'll have to tell you the name right here because I'm, I'm losing it right now. But <laughs> that tomato, it has a skin that's kind of fuzzy like a peach and it is an orangish, yellowish, peachy colored tomato, which means that it's probably gonna be a little bit less acidic than the red tomato varieties and a little sweeter too. If you haven't already, go check out Roots and Refuge Farm with Miss Jessica Sowards. I cannot recommend her enough. I know that we don't know each other in real life. I've never met Jess in person, but I just know that if we got together and knew each other, we would be like instant best friends. I feel like we have so much in common and I just love her channel. I have a couple of her um, hoodies, sweatshirts. She actually just came out with a book and if y'all haven't already if you're new to gardening even if you're not new to gardening but just want to fine-tune your skills check out her new book i'll leave it right here i am not sponsored in any way i just love the message that she sends about gardening she's so passionate and knowledgeable and positive and it's just contagious so go check out her book it's a really easy read with loaded with information wonderful gardening tips and it's just, it's a beautiful, well put together book. Now, as I came out here this morning, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I think honesty is so important. I was overwhelmed feeling this morning and you know, like there's nothing wrong. Like I am so happy in my life right now. I have a wonderful job. I can bring my dog to work with me, Evie. I work three blocks from where I live so it's easy to just get up and walk to work walk back home I have absolutely no complaints I love the people that I work with I am really really enjoying this new job I've been working there for a full four to five weeks now I want to say five weeks I'm falling into this new rhythm it's a new season literally but it's also a new season in my life so I'm going through a lot of changes in my daily routine like what I do when I get up in the morning my schedule has been shifted um, just like it's so strange I feel like I've had this major shift of a season in my life and I feel so thankful there's not 
anything that I don't like about my job. I'm in love with this job. It challenges me in ways and it also is just so uplifting and it's a wonderful place to be. I feel positive when I'm there. But I think because it's such a change that there's an adjustment. And I don't think that there's anything wrong with that. And I think that it's just part of it. It's just part of an adjustment. I love my new job. Like, I love it. Like, it's just so neat. I get up in the morning, my schedule's flexible. The people I work with are really, really positive. Uh, we have outings that we go on, like say a couple weeks ago, somebody donated an aquarium for us, a 55 gallon aquarium. And so we went on a little field trip and got that. And that was so fun. And we got to add some new fish to the tank. It came with a couple placostomuses that were over 20 years old some catfish and a couple of other fish, which is just like, it's so exciting. And then I love Evie's getting into the routine too. She's been coming to work with me for about three weeks now. And I leave her at home in the morning because my boss, the owner of this business brings her dogs in the mornings. So then whenever I come home for lunch, Evie is so excited to see me and we, have our lunch, I take care of the plants, take care of the chickens, look at the garden, and then when it's time to go back to work after lunch, I get Evie leashed up and we walk back to work together. And it's amazing for her because she's been a really shy dog with strangers. So it's been amazing to see her open up and develop that socialization that we, you know, we might not have opportunities to otherwise, getting her to meet so many new people. And she's been fantastic. And then we get to walk home together. So I love it. I really love it. But it has been an adjustment just getting into the groove of things. And so I feel like just that shaking up of my routine has made me overwhelmed feeling and I can't explain it. I can't put my I can't put my finger on it, these chickens. What is it, Pip? The only other thing that I can explain of a feeling of being overwhelmed is Luis and I, we have been together for over seven years now. And in that seven years, we have been saving up um, every little bit that we can. We've been budgeting so well. Every time we get paid, a percentage goes to bills, a percentage goes to this, that, whatever. And then a very large percentage goes towards our savings for our future home, for the future that we want to build. I, my dream and his dream too, we want a farm where we can have dairy goats and a big garden, a much bigger garden than this. And we love our chickens. We're going to take our chickens with us. We want to get into becoming more self-sufficient, self-sustainable, which means we are going to be wanting to try to grow more of our own meat rather than relying on the industry that gives us meat now from the grocery store. I would much rather grow our own pigs and harvest that way, which would be a huge adjustment in its own right and a little intimidating, but in the long run, I think better for the earth, better for our family, um, better for the pig being raised in the best way imaginable versus the alternative. So. We've been saving up for years and some days it feels like we are no closer than when we started. And I know that's not true. I know that we are moving forward and saving, but it's crazy when you don't have a timeline of we plan on moving now or we plan on moving in X amount of time. We're just, just keep saving, just keep doing what you're doing. And then of course, certain events Everybody has their own story. I am a worrier. A lot of people would probably consider me a nervous Nelly. No offense to the Nellies out there. I love the name Nelly, but I'm a nervous Nelly. <laughs> you can ask Luis. We'll be out and I'll be like, that makes me nervous. This makes me nervous. Oh no, this makes me nervous. And he says, well, everything makes you nervous. And I'm just like, Everything makes me nervous. <laughs> New things make me nervous. Unknowns make me nervous. I am a classic overthinker. I like to be prepared. So if I am not in control, it's hard for me to let go, to just breathe it out. That's something I'm working on. And 
So I feel like in overthinking things, it's really good. I'm a planner. It's really good to get out in the garden. What I did this morning, I came out here and I looked around at what I needed to get done today. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, when are we going to get to move? You know, like, when are we going to finally have our homestead? That's a real homestead, not a backyard in the middle of the city. And I love this quote from Miss Jessica Sowards at Roots and Refuge Farm. I cannot say enough good things about her. It says, turn your waiting room into a classroom. <laughs> and I have a sweatshirt from her that actually says that. Turn your waiting room into a classroom. And that is my mantra. That is something that I live by. And most of the time, things are great. But then every now and then I do get that overwhelmed feeling. And coming here into this garden bed is the perfect place to put that into action. I can look around and amend my soil. I can start my seedlings, see how they grow. And it really helps ground you into living in the moment and saying, I have planned for the future the best that I can in this moment. We have a plan for saving. We have a plan for getting ready for our future. Now that we are working towards that, let's just let go of the rest. Put that on the back burner. Keep your savings going. Every time we get paid, a chunk of it goes towards that future home, that future homestead, that future house. And now that that's happened, it is, the sun's coming out. And now that that's happened, and I feel as prepared as I can, sometimes it's just like, okay, enjoy this season. You know, I can stress about financial stuff. I can stress about where are we going to be in three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. But after you have that set up as much as you can, overthinking can only be considered positive planning to a certain extent. And then it's just worrying. So getting into the garden today, I was in a little bit of a worrying mindset, which happens sometimes. Most of the time I feel great and positive and just like, look at this guys, look at my chickens, look at my garden, look at this, look at that. Well, this morning I was in a very just mindful, thoughtful, like coming back to like, okay, where are we at? Are we, how much closer are we getting? <laughs> and so I came out here to the garden and I started working in the soil. Got this cultivator tool out. I started turning some soil around. I mixed in more vermiculite because I wanted to make sure that my soil would retain enough moisture this summer. I mixed in some alfalfa pellets as a slow release fertilizer for my garden. I even add a, a little bit more compost because I wasn't happy with the feel of the soil. You got to do what you need to do. Even if you go and look at the soil guide, you think it has this many reviews, it's a really great soil. Even if you buy a soil from the store, feel how it does where you live, <laughs> the chickens. I think the worst of their clucking is past. <laughs> so, no matter what soil you use, it's gonna behave differently depending on what environment you grow in, depending on even like if you grow in a raised garden bed, in the ground, or in a pot. So I decided to add a little bit more compost to my raised garden beds. I'm gonna add more vermiculite and compost and perlite to the pot I plan on putting my peanuts in. So that's what I was doing this morning. And of course y'all saw the edging that I dug out and it's crazy. I came into the garden this morning. My shoulders were tight. Uh, I had a headache. I was just in a crummy mood. I was in a worrying mood. And after an hour, maybe 45 minutes in the garden, messing with the soil, getting my hands in the dirt, hearing the birds chirping because it's spring, seeing the turkey vultures flying over on their migration north because the seasons are changing. And of course, hearing my chickens scratch around, doing their song when they laid an egg. It was very therapeutic. It was nice. I felt like I turned that overwhelming 
feeling into a determination to do something now, which was I'm in my garden. I'm starting to see the solitary bees flying around this stump, which means that it's spring. Let me see if I can show you guys. I don't know if y'all can see them. There's none right here, but they'll fly back around. They like going and making burrows in these holes that the woodpeckers made for them. I think there's just so much beauty in the little details. You know, we thought about having this stump removed and I'm glad we didn't because look at how much life comes out of a stump. The woodpeckers come and they're tapping on it for bugs and then where they tapped on it you think they're destroying and making a huge mess. They're making a home for a solitary bee who's going to come and pollinate my flowers this spring. So that's that's really beautiful. But what I'm getting at is it's okay to have big feelings every now and then. Big feelings I think are completely natural. I feel like it's a recheck. It, it makes you check in and think, okay, are we making progress? Where are we at now with me? I feel like I'm such a planner that I can plan X years in advance. And when I don't have that satisfaction, immediate gratification right now, it stresses me out. Like now I've already looked into what kind of barn we want to build for our goats. I already know what breed I want, how many of them, you know, like I already know what kind of pigs we're going to have. And yet here we are potentially years out from that goal and I'm turning my waiting room into a classroom and there goes my chickens again I'm turning my waiting room into a classroom and trying not to let time worry me I really like this phrase and I can't remember where I heard it from but it went like this the days are long, but the years are short. Just keep at it and soon enough you'll get there. So turn that overwhelmed feeling into determination. Let that channel through you and push you forward in a positive direction. Just stay positive, have a plan, set yourself up, and then let go of the rest. Let go of what you can't control. If you have that frustration, you have that extra energy nagging at you, Go work in your garden for an hour. That is the best therapy there is out here. Now today is too beautiful not to show you guys around a little bit at what's new and exciting here on our homestead. Let me show you the cactus that are doing good. These are everybody who, well, for the most part, survived our harsh winter here on our homestead in far western Texas. These little guys stayed inside the house this winter and we brought them out as the warm weather came out. The Sotol and the Choya are both native. They got through the winter without hardly any troubles. Ocotillos, they don't look very alive, but if you look closely, there is some green on the stems, which shows me that they're still alive. Now we've been watering them about once a week. I do, my method for cactus is I deep water once a week where I'll add about an inch of water to the pot, let it soak in, and then I won't worry about it until the next week. And that's been doing pretty good for these guys. Now, once ocotillos start getting water regularly in the spring, they will leaf out, grow a lot of pretty leaves. And then when they're old enough, I don't think these are mature enough yet, they'll grow beautiful red flowers on the top of those stems. And what's neat about ocotillos is they always seem to know and time their bloom to when the hummingbirds are migrating. Look at that, I think we have our first leaves of the season. They look a little red and stressed, but they'll leaf out and be a pretty green, and soon these will be covered in green leaves. Ocotillos are my favorite cactus and succulent, and they grow native out here. These can get huge, I'm talking like 20 feet tall. And then our quince bush right here, is starting to leaf out. We are a little sad. This quince bush had a hard drought summer last year and then a hard winter. And they are perennial in our area. They're not native, but they are perennial here. And they usually flower in the late 
or midwinter. So usually this thing will flower in January and then again in February. And this year we didn't flower at all. I think that it was just surviving and getting through the winter. As I say that, I'm gonna take that statement back because I do see a flower bud right there. So it does look like we are gonna get some flowers after all. So it's very atypical, usually this is a winter flowering plant. It'll flower before the leaves even come onto the tree. And I'll show you guys a picture of what this looks like when it flowers, but usually it's just a beautiful display of pink flowers with a backdrop of the entanglement of branches everywhere. And it's just stunning. This year, I'm really happy it's gonna, gonna try to flower. I'm seeing a couple more buds here and there now, but this is the, I guess the biggest struggle I've seen on this plant since we've lived here. And we've lived here for almost four years now. The quince bush comes in, this one is a pink flower. It also comes in other colors like red and orange as well. <laughs> hey girls. Give y'all some scratch. It's almost time for us to switch it up and stop giving them chicken scratch as the weather warms up. We only give them chicken scratch through the fall and winter because chicken scratch is really heavy in carbs, which can make it harder for a chicken to keep cool in the summertime or hot weather. Our summers, we can get into the 90s for several weeks in a row and the hottest we'll get is usually around 115 degrees Fahrenheit. So chickens don't do extraordinarily well in hot weather, but there are steps that you can take to keep your chickens a little bit more comfortable in the hot weather. And one of those things is we don't feed corn or chicken scratch in the summer, just in the winter time. And it's almost warm enough to where we're gonna be switching that out for another treat. We got our first cactus blooms for the year and it looks like we are gonna have a lot more flowers pretty soon. Y'all stay away from my cactus flowers. They're like, we will, we don't wanna get poked. In the front garden, I have my carrots are doing great right here. These are called little marvel peas. I am really excited that they're starting to pop up. My broccoli, I have started to finally harvest. I've only been harvesting what I need for meals I am starting to get flowering on my broccoli. Aren't those beautiful flowers? I'm thinking we're going to harvest a bit more of this early purple sprouting broccoli, but I also want to let some of it go to seed and maybe save some more seeds because I really liked this plant and how it grew. And I want to honor this broccoli plant by harvesting its seeds and letting it live on through more generations. This broccoli plant, its neighbor on the other hand, when it blooms, I will not be saving seed from it because it just has struggled and it's taken a lot longer. It still doesn't have a head of broccoli developing and they're the exact same age. So we'll eat all of this one when he comes up. And then of course I can give the leaves to the chickens who love brassica leaves. Don't you girls, somebody's gonna get that. Our last stop of the day is gonna be our greenhouse. I just wanted to pop in and show you guys an update on how my seedlings are doing. All of these empty looking pods are actually re-sown with new varieties as I have up-potted all of the empty areas and moved those seedlings to bigger pots so that they could grow better. So new in this tray started yesterday. I have heavy hitter okra, um, some dandelions, Chijimase, which is a type of relative to bok choy. We have collards, Alabama red okra, cardoon, which is related to artichokes, and some other things as well. A couple of other things as well. Everything else that's already green and popped up, I'm gonna let grow and develop just a little bit more before we up pot them because quite frankly, I don't have the space to up pot them. My greenhouse is completely full. Here we have peppers in this tray. Oh, happy birthday. This one was born today. 
I have nasturtiums and more peppers in that tray. And a couple of these cups are Malabar spinach. Down here is a tray full of plants that were up potted from that first tray I showed you. I have balsam, this is peppermint stick, some cosmos, borage, fennel, and calendula. Across the way we have a tray full of nasturtiums and more white borage, a tray of tomatoes, and a couple of my uh, Pekin peppers in the back. As we go up, I have another tray that is full of tomatoes. And I am so excited because I finally have one of my Dr. Weish's, sometimes heard as Dr. Witchy's tomato that has come up. This tomato plant will grow massive tomatoes and they're amazing. But what's funny is for it to grow such massive tomatoes, He's having a little bit later start than some of the other tomatoes that were started the same day as him. And then in the top tray, I have more seedlings that I up potted from that first tray we showed you. In this tray, I have marigolds, a couple calendulas, and basil. We have green basil and purple basil. Let me leave you guys with this one last thought. As the amazing Jessica Soward says, turn your waiting room into a classroom. This season is full of so much potential. Instead of worrying about where you want to be, even though you know you're moving that direction, work on what you can be today, right now, in this season. I hope that you guys have a wonderful week moving forward and I'll see y'all next week. If you like this video, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can stay up to date with everything going on here on the homestead at Reach and Reverie.